Hey everyone, it's Sandy, your Research and Consumer Insight Specialist at Dakota Space, a place where we explore cultural shifts, trends, tech, and human behavior. This interview is the third installment of our ongoing series of interviews with advertising experts who are currently evaluating the use of A-Power tools and providing their perspective and tips on how to incorporate them into practice. Today, I'm very happy to sit down with a special guest, Theophilus Wells IV, and uh, I think I, I gravitate towards calling you Theo, but um, he is a brilliant creative strategist. He's a writer and, of course, a tech uh, enthusiast. So thank you so much for joining us and welcome. Thank you. The honor is mine. I, I like um, so much of what you're doing and so much of what you're speaking on. So thank you. So you know, um, let me start by asking you uh, a, a little question, right? As we have observed this rise, because I don't have any other word to 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 describe this, but the rise in number of AI tools on the market right now, right? There are several, there's, and each one of them do different things. I'm curious to know, these tools have a place in your process for developing specifically strategies and content? I believe AI as a whole is just interesting in general. We're not new to AI. I mean, you know, we could already tell what the marketing industry has done to automated, you know, the idea of, of automating the messaging of content. Now we're, we're reaching an interesting phase of generative AI, right? Where the generative AI is made more so accessible to the masses. And I think there's a pro and a con to it. Um, personally, I think generative AI at best, I believe is great for research. I do believe that it's still up to the human to make the connections to a concept and perhaps allow generative AI to help you to arrive at those connections. So like, for instance, I compare it to like the way Batman uses his computer, right? Batman is still the detective, right? He's still the one who's on the brink of something great with his thought. And he just asks the computer to analyze the DNA really quick and to extract whatever samples. He's not Batman the scientist, right? So I think if we stay within the realm of letting generative AI help us to arrive at conclusions while we're on the brink of them, I think it's helpful. And that's actually a great analogy. I never thought of it like that, but um, I love the comparison with between Batman and uh, his computer. And yeah, sometimes yeah. I'm not going to say I feel like Batman, but I would love to feel like Batman. I want to feel like Bruce Wayne. I don't want the responsibilities of, of Batman. I want to feel like Bruce Wayne. That's what right? I'm So um, now let me ask you, because I have talked about this with other panelists and other friends in the industry and colleagues. We are working towards an ad industry that it's more human and much more representative, right, of the real makeup of the market today. Do you have any concerns, any thoughts about how AI tools could actually have a negative impact on that goal? And let me rephrase it or explain it a little bit better. Do you think there are any risks or downsides that we should be aware of as we try to make things more human and inclusive? I think that's a that's an amazing question. And I think the downsides to using generative AI in understanding human connections already exist. But I think that what, what generative AI does, it exploits those discrepancies and the negative error and the negative rooms that are already in place. So for instance, I think right now we do, to be honest, not the best job and understanding the humans near us or next to us or behind us or in front of us. And I think we do a great job at what I call keyword culture. Keyword culture is kind of, like I have certain keywords and categories that I in a way need to operate in within life. And if you're someone that doesn't fit into those categories, I don't know where to place you. So I may alternatively place you in the most recent category that I've managed to establish or a prior or previous category or a category that I've inherited from my family, right? Or from their prior experiences or my friends' experiences. I think because that already exists, I think what generative AI does, it takes people who are already not the best at connecting with the human in front of them and it now gives them a generative tool that they can refer to that can maybe tell them about who you are opposed to them simply asking you who you are. 
but I think there's been a, I think the advertising nature in general is so built around trends and it's built around secondary data that we've gotten very far away from the human connection and even having the curiosity of wondering who you are. And I think that's where generative AI can become an issue because it's taking the disconnect that already exists and it's actually giving it more distance and space. And I think that's the biggest downfall of how it could be used. I would never want someone to use generative AI to ask you, what's your favorite meal? You know, like I'd rather someone have the confidence and even the curiosity to say, I wonder what's her favorite meal and just ask, right? Or maybe just say, hey, maybe you're not the best with asking a question. Let's just go out to eat. Hey, and you pick the restaurant, right? And now they kind of get a feel for who you are. I believe that, to be honest, I think there's like a certain laziness, right? And even a lack of curiosity that undermines within, not just advertising industries, but just people wanting to get to know each other and just wonder who you are as a person. And I do think that that lack to me speaks more volumes than generative AI, because I can never draw. My daughter can draw, my son can draw, everyone in my family could draw. I have zero skill in drawing, nor do I have a curiosity to learn how to draw. So for concepting or visualizing something for a second, I love to use Midjourney, right? But I would never replace that with the artistic ability that an artist or illustrator goes through in crafting an image. You know, like the way that they could see something, stencil it out, make the face, add in the textures. I can't generate enough prompts in my head that can get me to where they are within seconds. I would have to like really sit and craft the wordplay. You know, I think there needs to be a certain respect for the artistic creation and the human connection that comes from that creation, right? Opposed to just saying, well, all right, let me just go on mid journey and sorry, let me go on chat GPT and let me craft up, um, some insights and let me craft up a strategic approach from 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 chat gpt if you can't do that on your own then you've strongly disconnected from the human experience and if you rely on it more than your own intrinsic curiosities i think it leaves you at a disadvantage especially long term yeah i mean that's that's an interesting take um and and i feel like perhaps this is something that not all of us have taken in, into consideration, especially because I feel like, you know, interactions today um, do happen behind the screen, you know, behind a keyboard. And that has become so natural uh, for us or for many of us. Um, and yes, I, I do believe that that lack of curiosity in um, just learning who that other person is through simple human interactions has really gone away. So. I think this is definitely something that we really need to take into account, especially as you just mentioned, uh, maturity. I'm also not very good at, you know, drawing or painting, even though I tried. <laughs> yeah, but, exactly. you know, it, it is it is fun to create something with Midjourney or any other of the or, or even Dali, right? But yeah. um but there is a skill to in that artistry of humans just creating something from you know pencil paper and you know canvas and oil so i think that is that is something that perhaps we haven't taken into account right that yeah. craftsmanship and, and yeah you're right it's you know we keep talking about prompts and prompts and prompts and um i still do believe that even when it's about prompts, those prompts need to come from a place of humanity or human behavior. How yeah. how do we uh, think, act, and you know do? So that that it's a very interesting take. I, I, um, I think we always like gravitate to like the new thing, and we never ask what ramifications come with the new thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if I flipped a coin and the coin landed on heads, it doesn't mean that tails doesn't exist, right? But frequently, because we can't see the tails, we completely ignore it or the possibility of what the tails could mean. And I think that, you know, just like with most advancements in technology, they've also led to other things. Like, you know, who would have, who would have ever known the on-take of social media could have led to potential increases in ADHD, 
right? Like there, there's a give and take to these things. And the take is always on the human. You know, like, you know, we, you know, there was the the major increase when was it in the 70s of like sugars and foods, right? But then it also went to potential lower life expectancies and then diabetes and then the obesity rate. Like there's always a give and take. And I think that with the human experiencing the take always, right, experiencing the that somewhat downside of this newer technology, it's important to ask, how do we maintain our humanity even more so, right, in the newest iteration of this, which is, of course, the generative AI portion? Yeah, absolutely. It, it does take a little bit. I mean, and this is what we do as strategists, right? <laughs> Look at, you know, what's uh, in front of us, but also what we're not really, really seeing, just looking at the whole picture. So uh, before we go, let me ask you, you know, because you men mentioned mid-journey, uh, but let me ask you, is there any other tool in particular that you like to sort of play with or incorporate in your processes? My personal favorite to play with is Midjourney. Um, I poked around ChatGPT quite a bit. Um, I have my likes and dislikes about it. I know it was it was the the beta when I tested it out the first time. Um, but to be honest, as newer platforms and newer generative AI tools evolved, I actually stepped further and further away from it. Um, especially like you know, there's some AIs right now that can literally build your entire business for you. You know, there's some AIs that can craft an entire, you know, an entire deck for you in storyline. Um, me personally, because I felt like it was taking me further and further away from artistry, I've decided, I don't know, I, I kind of looked at it like there's there's nothing outside of fascination, right? There's nothing for me to fully gain in all these spaces. I'd rather have one and enjoy that, or maybe another. And enjoy it, but not the multitude of them, because now there's like hundreds. Yeah, and it's rapidly expanding. Yes, I I know it's just like it's hard to keep track of how many AI power tools are you know coming out yeah. there. Yeah, I know. Um, HubSpot just bought a big one. There's like one that was utilizing people's calendars, and it was kind of showing the time you usually spend on something versus the time that you allot for it, and it would like automate where like what time is booking for what right, based around how you normally proceed in an activity. Um, so, I mean, yeah, there's tons popping up every single day. Yeah. Well, you know, thank you so much for joining us today. I really have enjoyed this conversation, um, especially coming from such a creative mind like yours, you know. Um, I think it's, it's very insightful to, uh, to kind of get that perception that you have of, AI tools in the workplace, specifically in the ad industry, and how there are so many things that we are seeing, we are being overloaded with, you know, all of this information about these tools, but there's so many other things that we are not seeing specifically on that human aspect and how we interact with each other. So um, this is this is why I'm doing this, right? Because we need to talk to the experts, we need to talk to the people in the trenches who, who are you know actively evaluating these tools. So I thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Yeah, you're most welcome. Anytime. All right. Well, thank you all for being here and watching. If you have any questions or comments for us, please leave it down below and we will see you in the next episode.